What is up, Flutterflow fam? Um, we are going to be implementing post hog in our Flutterflow app today. Uh, I did this last week, I think, and it was pretty simple. Um, yeah, you can see first seen seven days ago. So what we're going to do is three things. Read the docs, follow the docs, and then test how to hack uh, Flutterflow's uh, code. So if we look at the docs right here for the Flutter SDK, we're just going to go ahead and add our dependency. Um, and that can easily be done through our settings here and our project dependencies. And if we scroll down, yes, I know I have a lot. Uh, you can find it. Oh, those are the Flutterflow ones. And you can see right here, I have post hog flutter 4.0.1. Uh, just before recording this, I noticed that there was an update. So I went ahead and upgraded it. Um, and what we're going to do is follow, um, whoops, let me refresh that here. Okay. There we go. So we're going to need to add this to our Android manifest. Um, and one thing to note is that we're going to want to look at the session replay installation because that's the main reason I'm using it other than the events is that I want to be able to view how my users are using the app. So, and what I mean by that is this. So you can go ahead and see live recordings of what your users are doing inside your application. So if we go down here, we can see that we could initialize the SDK from our Android manifest, but we're not going to do that. So this auto init, we're going to say false, just like it does here. So because we're going to manually initialize it. Okay. So we're going to need a post hog in initialize action and uh, go ahead and add all of these additional stuff. We'll get to that in a second, but we're going to need to configure the session replay in the initialization action. So go ahead and just follow everything here. It's going to be, uh, we're going to need one action for both uh, iOS and Android. You don't need one for each. Um, but you will need to edit your info.plist. Uh, and we're also going to use the auto init false key here. And if we keep going down, uh, I'm not using web, so I didn't set it up for web, but you can go ahead and follow that as well. And then it gives you some information on how to capture events. Um, and all this auto capture stuff is included by default. If we go and look at my events here, you can see some of them. So application background, uh, stuff like that. So what the only thing I wasn't able to get working is screen. Uh, so screen tracking, and it says it should work with go router, which is what Flutterflow uses under the covers for its, uh, navigation, but uh, I wasn't able to get it to work. If anybody in the comments was able to, I would love to hear from you. And we can identify users. Um, and this is all uh, very clearly laid out within the documentation. I'm using that one as well. So post hog identify, and then I'm just passing in a first login date for it. So now let's go ahead and dive into the code. So if we scroll down here, uh, sorry, my, let's move me up here. So we have our Android manifest. And then if we scroll down, we can see the post hog, uh, configuration. So we're saying debug is false. We're saying auto init is false. And, uh, that's pretty much it. And you want to make sure this is after your activity. And 
Same for info.plist. If we scroll down here, we should see right there our post hog and the cap. This is all just copy and pasted from the docs, except for auto init was added uh, as false. So now that you've updated your Android manifest and info.plist, uh, we can go ahead and look at the session replay, how to configure that one. So it gives you, it tells you right here. So you need to make sure that auto knit is false and you need to set it up manually. So that's what I was talking about earlier. And after that, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, essentially wrap your app in a widget. So we need, okay, here it is. So this is how they recommend doing it, but because of the way Flutterflow works, uh, this exact uh, example does not work here. So what does work? And this just took, you know, some trial and error on my part. So you can see I have commented out what Flutterflow had done for me before. So they have run app that takes a change not notifier provider as an argument. And uh, that, so I basically tried a couple of different implementations, but this is the one that works. So you can see I tried to add the navigator class and the post hoc observer that wasn't even needed. All I had to do was wrap it in the post hog widget and uh, make the notifier a child of that. And then it just all started working like magic. So uh, I am not, so you have to unlock all of these files in order to do this. So I would recommend uh, copying and pasting, like creating some GitHub gist or something just so you have the previous uh, working version uh, on the side. And then you can see how I'm adding my post hog initialize action here. And then I'm obviously importing my post hog uh, Flutter SDK there. So that is pretty much it. You shouldn't need anything else. Um, and if we go back, you can see that I have a bunch of custom events that I've set up. Uh, I have my recordings working um, and everything is gravy. So let me know if this was helpful. And uh, if you need any help, feel free to reach out.